the Yellowstone quake swarms continue after the 5.0 magnitude that was downgraded into 4.4. This is the uh, new thermal area also has had quake swarms and they're continuing in Lima, Montana, where we had the 5.0 that was downgraded, whereas uh, U.S. Uh, Sizemo Berkeley still has it at a 4.9. I'll leave a link below for you so that you can keep a tab of that open. You can see that the whole area of Yellowstone, even the thermal area today, for example, the new thermal area that has been recently discovered, uh, basically it's about a, quarter, a third of the distance between Yellowstone caldera, the Yellowstone Lake, and the Montana earthquake swarm, today has had an earthquake swarm of its own. Now we have to keep in mind that this that's just south of about, it's about a 2.5 magnitude earthquake, five kilometers depth. That's not small for Yellowstone and it's uh, just south of the uh, Grand Teton River and Lake, south of Jackson, which of course is uh, the area of the supervolcano in Wyoming. Now we've had earthquake swarms all around Montana, uh, south of that area, earthquake swarms at uh, south of Great Salt Lake, which is, I would say, about uh, 300 miles, maybe 400 miles south of Yellowstone Lake. We've also had a number of quake swarms, one on top of the other, in Utah. We recently had the video on Utah being uh, a vast volcano field. I, don't, I, I would venture to say that I, there's hardly any area of... Uh, the surrounding Wyoming supervolcano up to the west coast that is not a volcanic field. They're all volcanoes. Um, we've even had a, um, just in the past hour, southwest of Redding, California, a 1.7 quake. That's around the area of, if you look at your Google map, the area of uh, not far from Long Valley Caldera, which is another supervolcano. Now, looking at the Google map, 5.0 earthquake, which Sizewa Berkeley still has as a 4.9, uh, that was downgraded by USGS a couple of days when it took place, days ago when it took place, because they're, they still have not come out with any type of an announcement as to uh, why that took place, what it was, what, what caused it. Now, they did have a 4.5 about 35 years ago in Yellowstone, and that was a big deal for them. Now, I don't know if they had downgraded that as well, but this one, everybody worldwide knows it was 0.5 uh, five magnitude uh, Richter, and we still don't have anything, information as to what caused that. So we've had the magnitude 3.4 earthquake swarms, like these were the aftershocks after the five, and they're still continuing. Uh, we go to Sizemo Berkeley, for example, uh, the interactive map, uh, they're still continuing. Quake swarms at the same exact area. Uh, no, wait, wait, it took me to, wait a minute, it took me to the um, something else. No, where is it? It took me somewhere else, sorry. Going back to my site, Sizemo Berkeley, I wanted to see uh, the size of the quakes there. I mean, it'll come back in again. Um, okay. Sorry. Please bear with me. This is important. Uh, why are they, they not coming out with any announcement concerning this? Okay, here we go. It's coming in again. Okay. The Lima area is... Um, okay, disappeared. Wait a minute. Back in. Okay, there it is. Okay, there we go. It's uh, between Helena and Idaho Falls. Okay, and uh, it's uh, 
next to the Missouri River. That's what that's the area that's also have been all this is being hit with uh, severe weather, as we know, right? Uh, Missouri River and uh, Mississippi. But uh, the 3.2 was uh, just a couple of hours ago. The 3.2 quake. These are again, they're not small. So um, they're continuing. Um, the earthquake swarms are continuing. Uh, Watchers reports USGS is recording numerous earthquakes about 6.2 miles northeast of Lima, Montana, since the 4.4 struck April 9th. Well, it was not a 4.4, it was a 5. Sizemo Berkeley still has it listed as a 4.9. 27 earthquakes were recorded in this sequence by 1445 UTC April 11. And today, you know, we've had another, I, I don't know, 10. The, the, the exact hour within the 5.0 magnitude earthquake, they had 10 aftershocks. So 27 recorded, uh, no, they were not, they were, those were the reported. The recorded were a lot more. So they downgraded that to a 4.4, depths of 2 and uh, 13 kilometers, 1.2 to 8.2 miles in depth. Uh, earthquakes detected near Lima, Montana from April 12th to, uh, from April 9th to 12th, USGS maps here. Geologist Michael Stickney said, were reports of Butte residents feeling Tuesday's earthquakes while some people in Lima and Montana described them as a bomb or an explosion. Okay? What? Okay. Well, a bomb or explosion is totally different from an earthquake. One of Tuesday's earthquakes occurred along a fairly active fault called the Centennial Tectonic Belt, Stickney says. This fault has not experienced in major, a major quake in decades. That's the Centennial Tectonic Belt. Quote, the really significant earthquake that occurred in this zone was in 18, 1983, 1983 Bora Peak, Idaho earthquake, which had a magnitude of a whopping 6.9. It resulted in two fatalities in Chal Chalice and caused significant damage, Stickney said. Uh, so uh, this is an area that has not seen activity in over, uh, well, just about 30 some odd years. And uh, it can give big quakes. This is called the Centennial Teutonic Belt. The, um, in the Lima area, it's a fault that has not experienced a major quake in decades. Now, the very, very shocking, astonishing uh, thing is that the residents in the area describe these earthquakes as bombs or explosions, according to KTWQ reports. So, as we have more information on this, of course, we're going to keep an eye out. This is very important. The uh, uh, aftershocks were from 3.5, and today we had a 2.5 earthquake in that same area. I'll leave links below for you for this, especially on Sizewell Berkeley. Uh, it's a great map. It has worldwide earthquakes as well, and even the tiny ones. And you'll see the activity on the West Coast and, of course, on, in the area of the Long Valley Caldera, which is neighboring Yellowstone, and it's another supervolcano. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. 
more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.